It's a remarkable piece in the Israel National News, senators who took money from Iran. Senators who took money from Iran. And it goes on. Democrats in favor of a deal that will let a terrorist regime go nuclear have taken money from lobbies for that regime. That includes Biden, Kerry, and Gillibrand. Senator Markey has announced his support for the Iran deal that will let the terrorist regime inspect its own Parchin nuclear weapons research site, conduct uranium enrichment, build advanced centrifuges, buy ballistic missiles, fund terrorism, and have a near-zero breakout time to a nuclear bomb. There was no surprise there. Markey had topped the list of candidates supported by the Iran lobby. Did you know there's an Iran lobby, ladies and gentlemen? Now, the Iranian-American Political Action Committee had maxed out its contributions to his campaign. And more fake suspense, Al Franken, another IAPAC-backed politician who also benefited from Iran lobby money, came out for the nuke sellout. Senator Gene Shaheen, the Iran lobby's third Democrat senator, didn't bother playing coy like her colleagues. She came out for the deal a while back, even though she only got half the cash that Franken and Markey received. As did Senator Gillibrand of New York, who had benefited from IAPAC money back when she first ran for the Senate, and whose position on the deal should have come as no surprise. Now, the Iran lobby had even tried and failed to turn Arizona Senator Jeff Flake. Iran lobby cash had made the White House count on him as the Republican who would flip, but Flake came out against the deal. The Iran lobby invested a good deal of time and money into Schumer, but that effort also failed. Still, these donations were only the tip of the Iran lobby iceberg. Gillibrand had also picked up money from the Iran lobby's Hassan Namazi, Namazi was Hillary's national campaign finance director who had raised a fortune for both her and John Kerry before pleading guilty to a fraud scheme encompassing hundreds of millions of dollars. Namazi had been an IAPAC trustee and had helped set up the organization. Bill Clinton nominated him as the U.S. ambassador to Argentina when he had only been a citizen for two years. Do you believe how corrupt this is? The stench is unbelievable. A spoil sports Senate didn't allow Clinton to make a member of the Iran lobby into a U.S. ambassador, but Namazi remained a steady presence on the Democrat fundraising circuit. Namazi had donated to Gillibrand, and had also kicked in money to help Franken, as well as Barbara Boxer, who also came out for the Iran deal. Boxer had also received money more directly from IAPAC. In the House, the Democratic recipients of IAPAC money came out for the deal, Mike Honda, one of the biggest beneficiaries of the Iran lobby, lobby back the nuke sellout, as did Andre Carson, Jerry Connolly of Fairfax, Virginia, Donna Edwards, Jackie Spear. The Iran lobby was certainly getting its money's worth. But the Iran lobby's biggest wins weren't Markey or Shaheen. The real, real victory had to come long before, when two of their biggest politicians, Joe Biden and John Kerry, moved into prime positions in the administration. Not only IAPAC, but key Iran lobby figures have been major donors to both men. That list includes Halsang Armaramadi. I, I don't know how to pronounce all these names. That includes Yabadabadu, the founder of the American Iranian Council, who had spoken of a campaign to conquer Obama's heart and mind, and had described himself as the Iranian lobby in the United States. It includes the Iranian Muslim Association of North America board members, who had fundraised for Joe Biden. And it includes the aforementioned Hassan Namazi, a member of Iran's opposition and accused Biden's campaign of being financed by Islamic charities of the Iranian regime based in California and by the Silicon Iran Network. Biden's affinity for the regime in Tehran was so extreme that after 9-11 he had suggested, quote, seems to me this would be a good time to send, no strings attached, a check for $200 million to Iran. It goes on. All right, it goes on. That's my granddaughter Sloan. Did you hear that, Mr. Producer? Did the world hear her? Yes, they're visiting from California. It's always a pleasure. She wanted to see. What's Grandpa up to? About 235 pounds. I'm actually down. I'm going to work out just to keep the ticker going. But how do you like that, folks? Did you know about that? Did you hear about any of this from any network television program? No. Washington Compost? No. New York Slimes? No. Phony Politico? No. Follow the money. Accept that money. The name was Coke. They'd be all over it. That's C-O-C-H. Not Coke, what Obama used to do. 